So you clicked on this video because you want to learn how to play Vecna. I'm here to hopefully give you some advice and some tips and tricks on how to improve playing as Vecna. I've been playing a lot of Vecna during the PTB and since he got released, and I've conjured up a few tips and tricks along the way that I feel like have helped me out and hopefully they can help you out too. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. I will be leaving chapters in the description of the video so you can click around and come back to it whenever you fancy. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. I'm going to try and break down Vecna fairly simply at the beginning, using what his abilities are and, and trying to kind of simply describe what each ability does as well. So he has a magic spell book consisting of four spells. These are his four different kind of miniature abilities that make up one ability in general. The name of the ability is Vile Darkness. If you press and hold the secondary power button, it will open up a spell selection consisting of four different spells. And if you move your cursor towards one of the four available spells, it will select it. The four different spells are as follows. Alongside each spell, I will provide some additional details, such as the spawn duration, uh, the movement speed, uh, radius, lifetime, for example, of different spells. Just so you guys get a little bit of a better understanding, which I hope helps. Fly, which does exactly as you'd explain it to. It flies you across the environment. It basically increases your speed. It doesn't fly you vertically upwards. It's just kind of a traversal perk, but it allows you to fly over vaults and pallets. I believe it lasts up to four seconds and there is a cooldown after using it as well. The second ability is Flight of the Damned and this quite simply put, throws out flying entities that pass through obstacles and can injure survivors who are not crouched. The third spell is a Dispelling Sphere. This allows you to throw out a very big ball, which is used as an information tool, and it grants killers killer instinct when it travels through survivors if they come within contact of the sphere, and it also disables their magic items for 60 seconds upon contact, which I think is quite an underrated use of it. The fourth and final spell is Mage Hand, and it basically grants the ability to create a magic purple hand that lifts dropped pallets back into the upright position if they're already dropped, or it blocks already upright pallets from being dropped for four seconds. One thing to note is that each spell is on its own independent cooldown. So you do not need to only pick one and then wait for all of them to be able to come back up again. You can use every single one of your spells before the initial one comes back up again. Now, just to touch on something that the survivors can interact with, these are magic items that you can find in treasure chests. When a survivor opens a chest, there is a 20-sided dice roll that appears. And depending on the rarity, depends on certain items that you can get. I won't go over all the items now as that's more for the survivors to get used to. And we're going to be focusing more on the killer for this video. There are two special items that you can get from these chests where survivors need to roll a natural 20 roll on the dice. There is the Hand of Vecna and the Eye of Vecna. If a survivor has one of these two items equipped and they are downed and on death hook, you can quick mori them in the same way Pyramid Head or Omrio can, which can be very useful to know. I'm now going to quickly go over his adept perks, starting with the first one, which is Dark Arrogance. This perk increases the duration that you're blinded by any means and the duration of pallet stuns by 25%. However, the trade-off is that you can increase your regular vault speed by 25%, which paired with some other perks, such as Bamboozle, could be very, very strong. The second perk is Languid Touch. This perk gives a survivor exhaustion for 10 seconds if they are within 36 meters from you and they scare away a crow. It has a 20 second cooldown as well. In my opinion, this isn't a great perk to have, although it could be good if you force them to run into crows. It could come in handy in certain situations, especially if they're trying to run dead hard or they are trying to set themselves up for a life vault or any other situation that they would be able to use an exhaustion perk. And the third and final perk is Weave Attunement. When an item becomes depleted for the first time, it's dropped and you see the auras of dropped items. On top of that, survivors within 12 meters of any dropped item on the map have their auras revealed to you and if they pick up a survivor item they suffer from the oblivious status effect for 30 seconds this perk would pair very well with franklin's demise as it encourages more dropped items on the map once you hit a survivor as well as the fact that the item depletes which means you pretty much have an aura beacon on the map for the rest of the match. I think Vecna's Adept is fairly easy to get in comparison to some other killers. As long as you're making use of his abilities and his actual magic spells, I think it shouldn't be too difficult of an Adept to get. 
Just to quickly gloss on add-ons that he has, I'm not going to go through every single one, but I'll explain a few notable ones and things I would recommend you using as well if you're getting started with Vecna. Vecna has two iridescent add-ons. One of them is called Iridescent Book of Vile Darkness. This one specifically, when you're using the fly spell to pass through any vault location, it blocks the vault location from survivors for 45 seconds, which is almost three times longer than like a bamboozle duration. This add-on also lowers the number of spectral entities, which are those those kind of skeletons that you use by Flight of the Damned by three. So from five, I think is the base to two and makes them fly lower to the ground as well. At ground level, the Flight of the Damned ability can be countered by survivors by simply crouching underneath them. So this iridescent add-on actually makes it so that they can't crouch to avoid it. The other ultra rare add-on is Vorpal Sword. This add-on makes any injured survivor that enters a dispelling sphere scream and gain the broken status effect for 30 seconds. This could be very, very useful if a survivor is getting healed. And if they come into contact with the sphere, it cancels their heal and stops them from being healed for a further 30 seconds. On top of that, using the Mage Hand spell on a downed pallet breaks that pallet in three seconds instead of it picking up the pallet. Both these ultra rare add-ons combined can be very powerful as it gives a huge buff to every single one of Vecna's spells, which makes him a lot more powerful than he usually would be. Now, my first tip and trick for Vecna, which also ties into two of his add-ons, is that I would recommend you pairing together Pearl of Power and Ring of Spell Storing. The Pearl of Power add-on reduces the remaining cooldown of your spells by five seconds for every single time you land a basic attack. And the Ring of Spell Storing decreases the cooldown of all spells by four seconds at base level. Pairing both of these add-ons together means you get a much more frequent usage of all of your spells. And when you're still learning Vecna, it is very, very helpful for you to accelerate your learning by being able to use these spells more frequently. Now, the next four tips I'm going to be giving are for each of the four spells that Vecna has. Starting with number two, which is the Flight of the Damned ability. Flight of the Damned can be used very effectively just before you reach the top of a set of stairs if you're following a survivor, so that the power that flies towards them is actually lower to the ground than it usually should be. Using it at that time means that the survivor cannot counter Flight of the Damned by crouching and they then have to make sure that they avoid it by weaving in and out in between the skeletons. Tip number three is to do with the Dispelling Sphere. The best time that you can use this sphere is when you're chasing somebody else, as you can turn away and use it in the distance so that you can try and get some information on where the other survivors are on the map. One thing that's key to note is that it's really useful to use when you are in a position where there are two or more gens lined up. As the sphere is a traversal spell, it means that you can line up the generators and have the sphere moving towards it, which means you can get lots and lots of value from both generators to see where the survivors are, if they are there. However, if you're on an indoor map and maybe the gens aren't quite lined up, you can just use the dispelling sphere right in the center of the map and aim it slightly upwards so that it travels between both floors. This means you're getting as much value out of the sphere as you can. And even though it doesn't cover every area of the map, especially if you're already in a chase, it can give you some information on where to go next. Now, tip number four is to do with the flying ability. One thing that is very, very useful is flying over a vault that leads to a drop. For example, at the top of Gideon's meat plant, where there is the vault that drops all the way down to the bottom floor, if you were to use your fly power over the top of this vault, the cooldown will begin as soon as you vault, which means even though you're falling, you're still recovering from that fatigue after using the ability. This means that you can catch up to survivors in chase a lot quicker, even if they're running something like balance landing. When fly is used effectively, it can be very, very powerful. So it's a good idea to try and pick and choose when is the right time to use it. It is viable to use fly just to simply catch up to a survivor, but if they're just about to approach a window, maybe it's useful to hold onto it so that you can save it and fly through it to potentially try and block them on the other side. The fifth and final tip is going to be about the final spell, which is is Mage Hand. Because Mage Hand only works for a few seconds, it's difficult to know exactly when the best time is to block or lift pallets. But from experience, I feel like the unsafe and short loops are the best places to use this spell. Unless you're very, very close to a survivor on a larger loop, I feel like it's actually easier to break the pallet. It's a little bit of a high risk, high reward when you're picking up a pallet if a survivor has already dropped it, especially on a powerful loop, as another survivor can come back to this loop later on and use it again. Mage Hand allows you to 
mind game on a short loop a lot more effectively when you have the pallet side after you lift the pallet. But also blocking a pallet can be very useful to force them to the other side of the unsafe loop as it either forces them to leave that loop or brings them into a bit of a 50-50 situation if they don't have line of sight to you, which gives you the upper hand overall. I hope I provided some valuable information. Be sure to leave a like and comment if there's anything I missed out or any other tips and tricks that you might have for other people learning Vecna. I know I didn't cover absolutely everything and he's still a very new killer as well, so I'm still learning and I'm not a professional. But nevertheless, be sure to subscribe if you are new. Be sure to follow me over on my Twitch channel. I stream there five days a week and I'll be playing a lot of Vecna in the coming weeks. Let me know if there's any other killers that you might want tips and tricks on. Feel free to click one of the videos on screen if you're interested in watching any more content from me. I would very much appreciate it. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.